What's going on guys? It's Omni York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Attila in Rise of Kingdoms. The man, the myth, the legend. Cheers. This is for Attila. Yes, you've heard of him. Yes, you've seen him on the battlefields. And yes, he was broken for a long time. Guys, if you don't have the time to watch this entire video, there is a link in the pinned comment down below to check out my written guide for Attila. It'll show you the talent builds and all that good stuff. It'll save you some time. If you appreciate that, make sure you smack the subscribe button and click that bell to turn on notifications. About 75% of you guys are not subscribed, so make sure you go ahead and do that. Now, at this moment in time, you might be thinking, Omniarch, you haven't even invested in Attila. He's so good and you haven't invested in him yet well that's what this series is all about and i think it's appropriate that the 10th episode in this series is talking about attila right because this whole series is about investments and is this legendary a good investment for you so the fact that i have 1330 legendary commander sculptures and i have not invested in attila well, you'll find out why. Anyway, Attila is a cavalry conquering attack based legendary commander here in Rise of Kingdoms. He first shows up in your kingdom on day 345 on the Mightiest Governor event cycle. That might change now that the Mightiest Governor event has completely changed after Light versus Darkness, but you can always use your Universal Legendary Commander sculptures to increase his skills later. You can also eventually get him on the Card King or during the Card King event. And we haven't seen really the legendary uh, tavern in KVK yet. We should be finding out about that shortly potentially in a couple of hours at the time of recording this but you could probably get him from the legendary tavern event and with that out of the way let's go ahead and take a look at Attila's skills so Attila's primary skill says for the next four seconds he's going to deal 30 percent more normal attack damage 30 percent more counter attack damage and normal attacks have a 50 percent chance to reduce the target's attack by 50 percent for two seconds with a two second cooldown so every time his active skill goes off he can either pop this zero times one time or two times Attila's second skill says when he's attacking strongholds or cities his troops deal five percent extra damage across the board and have a ten percent chance each turn to reduce enemy garrison troops defense by 25 percent for three seconds Attila's third skill makes it so he takes 15 percent less skill damage but also deals 30 percent less less skill damage in exchange and at the same time cavalry units gain a 15 percent extra march speed and 40 percent cavalry attack now this skill is the reason why you really only see Attila paired with Takeda because pretty much every other legendary cavalry commander deals some sort of skill damage. Attila's fourth skill actually has a 50% chance of increasing all of his damage by either 50% or 100% when his entire army is cavalry. There's a 25% chance of increasing it by 50% and a 25% chance of increasing by 100%. Finally, Attila's expertise says that his army is immune to silence effects and when an enemy has less than 50% of units remaining, normal attacks against it deal 20% increase damage and after leaving battle march speed is increased by 50 percent for three seconds so as you can see by his skills he's dealing a ton of normal attack damage a ton of counter attack damage he has 40 percent extra attack he has the defense debuff there's a lot to love about attila i mean when you think about just raw sustained damage attila is the first thing that comes to mind and on top of that he has the attack tree and with that being said let's talk about his talent builds so i have two talent builds i want to show you today this first talent build is for open field fighting canyon performance and for rallying the first thing you're going to notice here we grab obviously we grab effortless it's just a really solid talent for increasing damage we came over here and we grabbed martial mastery because we're just gonna that's gonna elevate his damage at no downside we also grabbed uh, buckler shield to reduce the counter attack damage that we take and of course burning blood actually works different in the attack tree so if you guys are new to the game or you're not super familiar with talents burning blood uh, actually grants more rage when you're attacked in the attack tree and this is why people say you should never swarm an attila takeda because you're basically just giving him free rage which if you know anything about his active skill which we just talked about he's actually going to deal way more damage because he's dealing more normal attack damage more counter attack damage to everybody that's hitting him and it's just overall it's a terrible idea now this second talent build is actually pretty much exactly the same but you're going to want to use this one when you're rallying an objective or a city that isn't dealing any skill damage if you're not dealing any skill damage you don't have to come up here and grab emblazoned shield because 
because you just don't need it so you can come over here grab entrenched and that's going to just elevate your damage reduce the damage you're taking it, it's good and that's it that's it for talent trees attila is pretty much a one trick pony he's just going to deal a ton of normal and counter attack damage and he's really really good at that so now let's talk about attila in each of the respective categories we're going to break him down we're going to talk about rallying open field fighting defending objectives canning and barbs and forts you guys know the drill this is episode 10 okay you've been around the block a couple of times let's go right into it the first category is open field fighting and attila you know what attila loves open field fighting okay he's dealing a ton of damage in the way that he knows how and he, he's really good at it if you're in a giant fighting scenario well guess what if you get swarmed hey that's actually not too bad for attila he's gonna do just fine remember when he's expertise he can't be silenced he also has that defense debuff there's a lot of good stuff to, to love about attila and he's got that march speed especially with cavalry units he's really powerful in the open field in fact the only things that are preventing Attila from being S tier in open field are the things like, you know, he's not dealing any AOE damage, right? He's not uh, supportive of his nearby allies. He's not doing uh, AOE supporting buffs similar to like Joan of Arc or something like that. So really Attila's just out there by himself, right? He's there for you and you only. He's not really helping anybody. He's just hitting one target and you know, that's pretty much it. And yes, he's dealing a ton of damage to that target. And if he gets swarmed, that's a pretty much a positive trade, but realistically, there's no utility to bringing him to open field fighting. And and that's why even though he is super powerful in the open field if you just avoid the attila then it's, it's pretty much fine so despite him being super powerful in one of the best uh, combos in the game right attila takeda uh, he's gonna get actually an a tier for the open field category now the next two categories are rallying objectives and rallying cities and this is probably why you guys clicked on the video right let's just be real okay we've got nebuchadnezzar in the game right and people are saying hey is it worth it to invest in Attila? I've got him halfway there. Or I expertised my uh, Takeda off the wheel, and then I invested some universals, and now I kind of feel silly. Like, should I just go, should I just go for Attila, or should I just take my losses? Right? People aren't sure. Should we still be going for Attila? So we're going to be talking about that. Okay. Now. He actually gets, in my opinion, the same ranking for both of these categories, but he is better at one than the other. Okay. He's better at one than the, than the other. And, and I'll tell you why. Okay. He gets an S tier for both of these categories. And I think you guys probably saw that coming, right? Again, Attila Takeda has been a dominating rally combo forever. Like since the moment they came out, they've tried to nerf them. They've tried to buff the opposition with Constantina Martel. It's just, they completely changed rise of kingdoms forever. Right? So Attila Takeda is an S tier rally and combo if we're talking about rallying objectives i think attila has fallen a little bit short here uh because of zenobia okay zenobia is the main reason why you see some players saying oh attila takeda is not great anymore attila takeda is good okay he's good again people are saying you know and this granted this is not a lot of people there's a, there's a couple of people saying oh attila takeda is kind of pointless to invest in now i disagree okay uh, i disagree we'll talk about whether or not you should invest in that's the whole point of the video we'll get to that in a minute but it's not like he's dead in the water okay all that happened is they introduced a counter to attila that's that's all they did right now it, does everybody have a zenobia all of a sudden no they don't right she's still relatively new yes she's been in the game a couple of months right but attila's kid has been around forever and tons of players have them so attila is insanely powerful for rallying objectives with the only exception of being potentially a you know zenobia theodora right zenobia is just so good at countering attila but besides that if it's not a zenobia Attila's pretty good in a rallying for a rallying objective like he, he's just he is he's just dealing a ton of damage and that hasn't changed they haven't nerfed him right that hasn't changed he's still insanely powerful now he is a little bit weaker than he was before again because this is an OBL. and also we did get Theodora and YSS and you know there's a lot more garrison commanders in the game than when uh, you know he first came out so you know of course I'm not saying he's as dominant as he was before but you know at the end of the day he's still dealing a ton of damage he's still very powerful if we talk about rallying cities Attila is like a slow burn man he is gonna deal a ton of damage to your city and that's gonna result in a, a, an overflowing hospital way more deads right if you're if you're hitting a city with huge skill damage you're gonna not see as many deads as you would see if it's an Attila Takeda it's just something about that combo something about doing dealing that normal attack and counter-attack damage that that type of damage just seems to deal way more deads and it's insane so when it comes to zeroing a city if your goal is to zero a city 
Attila Takeda is an absolute beast of a combo. It still is to this day. It's insane, especially when you're rallying a target that you can't easily reinforce, right? If you can't easily reinforce that Attila Takeda rally, well, you know what? It might get swarmed down, but hey, that's still probably going to be a pretty positive trade for you. And that's fine. You're going to generate a ton of rage anyway. And I think that's the big thing when it comes to a rally with Attila and Takeda, you, you just really can't swarm them. And so it's really difficult. Now, granted, you, you know, you can swarm them, but you have to really have an advantage and you have to be willing to, you know, take a little bit of a loss. So all that to say that, yes, Attila is not the God tier that he was before, but he's still, in my opinion, and in my estimation, a very powerful S tier commander for the rallying objectives and rallying cities categories. When it comes to defending objectives and defending cities, I really don't see a good reason to use Attila, right? He's he's really good at rallying. You see that conquering tree, you see that attack tree, right? We don't see a garrison tree, we don't see a defense tree. We don't see a ton of def defense stats on Attila. We don't see a ton of health on Attila. We don't see any shields. We don't see a, th there's really not anything that that suggests to me that Attila would be great in a flag or to defend your city, right? Now granted, the attack tree means he's not really going to be sworn which you know sure but at the end of the day Attila is meant for hitting things not for taking those hits and because of that I'm giving Attila a D tier ranking for the defending objectives and defending cities categories when it comes to cannon performance Attila is really solid here I mean again Attila and Takeda are just j like j they're just built different they are built as really powerful commanders just it, it just statistically they're very powerful so for the same reason that we gave him an a in the open field i'm gonna give him an a here in canyon right okay he's not dealing aoe right he's not dealing aoe he's not aoe buffing he's not aoe debuffing so okay he's not an s tier but there's the raw damage and the fact that if he gets swarmed it's it's pretty much to your benefit right like attila when he's paired with cicada are just an absolute monster of a unit together and if you put them in your canyon team it's not going to be a bad play okay it's not going to be a bad play yes you would prefer some sort of aoe or buffing or something like that but at the end of the day it's raw damage that's what it is and they're very powerful and because of that they get that a finally for barbs and forts attila could totally be used for these things but i you know it just it, it seems a little bit silly right it's like bringing a it's like bringing a tank to a knife fight like it I, I don't know we don't get any bonus experience we don't deal any additional damage to barbarians or neutral units really we don't do any aoe either right so the only thing really that you would use a teleport for fighting barbs and forts is like the fact that he has march speed right and the cavalry tree that's pretty much it now one fun thing that you could do is you could actually initiate a rally on the other side of a pass and try and bait the enemies to swarm you and if they do they're absolutely stupid and terrible at the game because everyone knows not to swarm Attila. That's pretty much the only time I could ever see me really using an Attila in, a, in, in like a PVE fort rally. Anyway, I'm going to give Attila a C for the barbs and forts category. Yes, he's going to absolutely shred through them, but there's, you know, th there's better options. Okay. The moment of truth. This is what you guys have been waiting for. What is Attila's tier when it comes to an investment, right? When you're investing in legendary commanders, how good is it to invest in Attila? Well, we've basically basically talked about him being a solid performer in the open field, solid performer in Canyon and absolutely dominant when it comes to rallying objectives in cities. Granted, he does have uh, a, a, a reliable counter now, right? With Zenobi being in the game. And so as an overall investment, I'm going to give Attila an A tier. And this is why I personally haven't invested in Attila, because if you're going to invest in Attila, you have to expertise him, which means you also have to expertise Takeda. So you really have to spend a ton of use universal legendary commander sculptures on both of these commanders and fighting for Attila when he first comes around is going to be an insanely expensive mightiest governor. Event. Plus, by the time I started ramping up my own spending, Attila had already been in the game for a while. I missed my chance. I migrated a couple of times. And then by, at that point, it's like, is it really worth it? Right? Because then you have to also consider the type of gear that you need to get for him. You want to have all legendary pieces because he's you're going to be a main rallier, right? And honestly, when we're talking about commanders in this series, the commanders that get the S tier ranking are ones that I think a lot of people should be investing in. And do I think a lot of people should be investing in Attila? Not necessarily, right? I think he, he provides a niche role, right? You really only see him with Takeda and that's because he really just does one thing really well. Now, again, you could use him in the open field and stuff like that, but that's not why people are investing 1,400 legendary commander sculptures into this combo, right? It's, it's just not. So at the end of the day, yes, Attila and Takeda are insanely powerful, but should everybody invest in them? 
Probably not, right? And at the end of the day, is it going to be a bad investment if you decided to? Heck no, absolutely not. These are a really powerful combo, and that's why I think they're worthy of the A tier investment for Attila. Anyway, guys, I think this video has actually been a little bit longer than some of the other ones in the series, but there's a lot to talk about here with Attila. If you guys found this video useful, informative, educational, or anything like that, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Comment down below what you think about Attila. Do you think he's a solid investment? Do you think he's past his prime? I would love to kind of get a general consensus as to what people think. As always, my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, all that stuff is always down below. And finally, there's a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stocks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. I think the game looks absolutely gorgeous on a big screen, and I think you're honestly at a disadvantage if you're in an open field fight in KVK and you can't see what commander you're trying to hit and your fingers are too big to touch the screen just eliminate all that headache and, and download blue stacks link is in, is in the description like i said it's free why don't you give it a try with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni we'll talk to you guys again soon peace